this is what I meant. Um, so, um, implicit differentiation. Um, well, yesterday I kind of I said everything there is to say about it. All that is left is to do more examples because it's confusing. So what was implicit differentiation? Um, so what happens is that we sometimes we are given a function um, a function of x which I'm going to call y uh, we're given we're they don't give us an equation that solve for y but we get an equation uh, well, an implicit equation. Like yesterday, we were saying the graph of y is part of the graph of a circle. So when you do this, maybe this is not describing a function anymore, it's describing two functions. Um, that's one of the problems that there are, uh, and there's more. Uh, the other is that I have to solve the equation, and I really don't want to. Or maybe I can't. I want, if I want to find the derivative anyway, What I can do uh, is I can take derivatives on both sides. And then uh, solve for y prime. The chain rule is going to make some y primes pop up in a lot of places. And then there's going to be an equation that's pretty easy to solve because um, is just always going to be linear. So you just go solve it. <clears throat> and and then that gives you an expression for, for y prime. And it's hard to grasp because of the letters meaning different things, but the computations aren't, aren't even that hard. So here's an example which we can do with implicit differentiation, but it would be it would be really hard to do um, without it. So this equation, according to the book, is called the Cox's volume. Never heard this word, but I mean, I assume it means sheet. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I mean, double E, not I. <clears throat> I assume the other one is some sort of philosophical concepts that he came up with. <clears throat> Actually, it must have been. The Kong must have been a, a fun guy. He thought a, a devil was uh, tricking him into believing that reality was real. Uh, so, um, so this equation, it looks at, um, it looks like this. It's definitely not the graph of a function. I can tell it's symmetric when I exchange x and y, which means that this is 
an axis of symmetry. Uh, I mean, I make an intelligent pivot to wrap it, which is how I know. But the thing is, this definitely doesn't pass a vertical line test. Um, I mean, in some places it does, and in some it, it's not even close. Um, all of these, hmm, all of these points, all of these lines over here, they have um, the vertical line process three times, um, which is probably really bad. Uh, but the thing is, there's there's graphs of functions here. They just decide to ignore part of the drawing. For example, you know, if I just say I'm going to look at this part. What's the color? Okay. If I say I'm going to look at this part, and then over here, this is the graph of a function. Um, you know, and what we do with the inverse of sine, uh, you just look at a little bit until it passes a vertical line test. And then th th there's the thing is, there's a lot of functions you could find in here. Um, basically, any piece you can think of. For example, why don't you choose this and then choose this? This is a function that is not continuous, but it's still a function. All it needs to do is pass the vertical line test. Uh, for example, I could go like this. So this is not the graph of a function, but if I go like this, now I've got an, only a piece of the graph, and this is the graph of a function. So I can ask about its derivative, which right now is all I care about, which takes some other piece. Um, so the thing is, there's a lot of, this defines, this equation defines several functions, uh, but I don't want to solve them. Y equals f of x. Um, presumably, it's going to be when if I did solve this, it would be square roots, and then I would have to pick plus or minus. There would be cubic roots. Um, there would be a lot of problems. Um, So um, <clears throat> but I can take um, but I can find the derivative without doing all that stuff. My implicit differentiation. Let's see how. So here's my function, my not my function, my equation. The thing is, both things, um, both, both sides of this equation are functions of x. They're the same function of x. So I can take the derivative because y is supposed to be a function of x. Is I, if I take y and I cube it, that's still going to be a function of x. And then I add x cubed. Well, that's still something. Where if you tell me x equals one, I would find y the cubed at x um, at one cubed, and I would get an answer. That's what a function is. And the same on the other side, I would find y multiplied by x multiplied by six. So I can take the derivative, and if the functions are equal, their derivatives are going to be equal for sure. And and now as long as they follow the differentiation rules. And take into account that y depends on x. So that's the most important thing. If you don't do this, you're not going to get answers that make sense. So, 
So, um, so the derivative of x cubed plus the derivative of y cubed. Um, <clears throat> so this is, um, well, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. That's what the, um, the, that's what the power rule says. <clears throat> and now for the derivative of y cubed, I have to use the, I have to use the chain rule. So if you see a function of y, you could just take the derivative respect to y. I mean, the answer is take the derivative respect to y and then multiply by y prime because this is dy cubed dy and this is dy dx. So this is what the chain rule gives you. If that makes sense. I'm going to cautiously move forward. Okay. Now on the other side, I have the derivative of six x y, and I know constants that are multiplying can come out of derivatives. So now, what um, what rule do I need to use here to take the derivative of um, x times y? Only like five or six options. The sum rule, the constant multiple, the products, the quotients, the chain rule, the exponential products. Thank you, Sydney. Product rule. Yeah, um, x times y is a product. So uh, the product rule. Uh, says that I'm supposed to take one derivative and then not forget the six, which is multiplying the whole thing. Maybe I will remember that the six is multiplying the whole thing. One derivative and then the other derivative. So dy dx is what I'm trying to find. And the derivative of x, uh, the power rule tells me what that is. The derivative of x is one. And here, if I'm, if I'm, if I have these brackets here, which tell me to multiply six by everything, uh, the six comes out appears here as well. And here I'm not doing anything. Oh wow. Okay, so so that's it. Um, we took the derivative. Now we're going to solve for y prime. All right. Are there any questions? Wait, so why didn't you um, take the derivative of y? You just kind of let it stay there? Because that's what I'm trying to find. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the answer is for the derivative of y. So there, there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah. But my goal is to, to get, once I get here, now I want to solve for y prime. So that's what I'm, that's, that's my goal. My goal is to eventually know what the derivative of y is. 
but when you're doing this, you you never know what the derivative of y is at the beginning. You 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 discover that at the end. Okay, so this is the equation I have, and to solve for y prime, the thing is that this equation, by how by why the the way the chain rule works, this equation is always linear. So um, so that means that you can take uh you can put y primes on one side the rest on the other and then divide by y diverse multiplying y prime so if i put the y primes on the left this is going to be negative 6xy prime. If I put the terms with no y prime on the right, the 3x squared is going to be subtracting. So move this to here. Move that to there. And once you're here, you realize that this is y prime times a bunch of other stuff. That it was that that's what it means to be linear. And now you can solve by just dividing by this thing that is multiplying y prime. And well, I still don't know a formula for y, uh, but the thing is, if I know a particular value of y, I can definitely get the answer. So given that I had no hope of solving. For y, this is the best I can do. So this is my answer. And that is um, that is implicit differentiation. Any questions? By the way, I'm asking um, if there's any questions now. Dustin. Uh, so whatever, like let's say that we had to use like the quotient rule instead, we would still, whenever we take the um, derivative of the y, we would still leave it as like, you know, y prime because we don't know it. Yeah. What whatever we do, it's still always going to end up looking like y prime somewhere. Yeah. You don't simplify. I well, I don't. Well, the, I mean, the main reason I'm not simplifying here is I don't know how. Oh, there's the threes. Okay. Well, I could get rid of the threes, but I don't know anything else to do. <clears throat> so this is. Um, but I mean, I would never, I don't come simplifying as part of the problem. So I could write it like this, um, which I'm about to try to find a particular value. So probably nice that I simplify. So thanks, Matthew. Um, well, I mean, if you're gonna simplify and then forget the two, like I just did, then it's better to not simplify. <clears throat> but, um, you know, that was an answer. There were basically, if there's no derivatives left, I count that as an answer. So, um, yeah, whatever rule you're using, you just, you're still not going to know what y prime is. Um, so, you got to just leave it there. And the thing is, this formula looks like you would need to know y to. Um, to do anything with it. But if you look at this equation, or maybe if you look in the book where they tell you, um, um, there's a point, the three, three is a point in there. Uh, notice that three, three is in the curve. Um, 
because mean in the curve is the same as satisfying the equation. And three cubed plus three cubed equals six times three times three. Uh, both sides are equal to 54. So um, the way I find the tangent, well, I, I just I basically just did. I know that the derivative is um, the derivative is given by this formula, and and I was told what x and y are. They're they're both three. So um, if x is three and y is three, so I didn't solve for y. I just I mean I solve for y for a particular value. Um, which is much easier than solving for uh, having x uh, be a letter. So then this is 2 times 3 minus 3 squared divided by 3 squared minus 2 times 3. And that's going to be, uh, well, the numerator is the, is the opposite of the denominator. So this is negative 1. So this is telling me that the slope is negative one. So the tangent line by the point slope formula is y minus three equals to negative one x minus three in the in this formula. This is the y coordinate of the point. This is the x coordinate. And this is the slope. So that's what I think the tangent line is. Um, let's see if I was wrong or not. Ooh, what's tangent? I mean, by the symmetry, it has to look like this. Um, but there you go. Um, we found the tangent. So if if you knew another point in the in this curve, which I think clicking now doesn't work because it's, I didn't give it as a function. If you give another point in there, uh, if you found it, you would be able to find the tangent line, which is practically it's it's easier than it sounds because often you don't start with the equation. You start with you start with the points, and then you want to see what's happening. So, um, so that's it. So let me remark, I think this is interesting, uh, talking about how this would go if I had to solve this. Um, What, what do you what do I call it? Um, old method. The method we would have used before yesterday, uh, which is solving and then taking the derivative. Solving for y in the equation x cubed plus y cubed equals six x y. So you know a quadratic formula, but this is a, a cubic equation because there's a y in there and there's a y cubed. So the degree is, is three. And a thing cubic equations have, which is not at all relevant for calculus class, but there, there is a formula for solving this. Um, it's not a formula. I think no one, no one bothers to memorize this formula. Why would you, if you can just go on the Wikipedia page? So, I mean, you look here, uh, well, this equation doesn't have x squared, uh, which we're lucky because ours doesn't. Because if there was an x squared, the formula would be here. But you have this nasty thing as a solution, um, which is way easier compared to what we would have if there was no, if there was um, an x squared term. So you can write this equation and and solve it. And one thing, uh, so huh. 
so uh, the book did this for us. And I'm not gonna screen share the book because I think the lawyers will come for me. But here's the formula. Um, so first of all, first lesson is that once you go past degree five, there's not even a formula. Once you go outside of polynomial uh, problems, there's not even, there's no formula. And often they're literally impossible to solve. There's just nothing you can do. The best you can do is not solve for y. Um, but say we could solve it. Um, so, no, no, no. Oh, it's rotating. Oh, we're not. So we would have to first use the crazy cubic formula to to arrive at this answer. And um, this answer doesn't doesn't really work. <laughs> it works some of the time, but um, I mean you you got to worry about which of the which of the points here, which of the possible functions it's drawing, and it can't. I mean can't be drawing all of them. And the thing is, what if, what if this is negative? Well, if this was a quadratic equation, having a negative square root would mean that there's no solutions, but here, this could be negative and there could be solutions. Because if you look at the, every vertical line, um, through for every value of x, so for every x coordinate, uh, every every vertical line crosses the the graph, which means that there's always solutions. But um, this is not giving them to you because you're doing negative square roots. So then you have uh, more problems. And then so even if that wasn't enough, uh, then you have to take the derivative of this nasty thing, which you could do. You have to do like a lot of a lot of chain rules whole lot of chain rules. Um, uh, but anyway. It would be terrible. I don't know if I'm conveying this, but living without implicit differentiate, differentiation is not feasible. I hope I hope I'm um, I'm achieving the desired um, level of horror. Okay, so any questions? How do tangent lines relate to real life? Tangent lines relate to real life. Uh, probably most often when you want to solve a problem that says, what do I do to make the most money? We won't ever be tested on how to do it, the old method with implicit, right? You might, but not, but if, if, if I ask you, it's not, um, it won't be something so hard. I will never make you take the derivative of that function or solve an equation that is impossible. So Matthew has a very interesting question, which is how tangent lines relate to real life. And so first of all, derivatives are super duper useful. And if you look in the book, uh, there's a lot of things they call real life examples and they, they are, I mean, the, the thing is, the thing is math is easy and real life is hard. Um, so if you look in the book, Where is there? <clears throat> uh, it says, for example, 
then on page 657, it tells you how can we pick curves together to assign shapes to represent letters on a laser printer. Like, I'm sure that is related to the actual real life problem of designing shapes to represent it in the laser printer. But to fit it in, in, in a book that's on another topic, you you have to you have to work a lot. Of so you know you want to use calculus to build rockets. Well, the thing is, you need calculus to build rockets, but you also need to know a lot about rockets. And I can't teach you about rockets. I don't know about rockets. So I can give you hints of how this looks in real life, but I can never give you actual real life examples. You know. But the thing is. There's a there's a thing in the next chapter called optimization problems, which is incredibly important in real life. And that is when you are trying to solve the problem of how do I things like how do I make the most money? How do I uh, spend the least on doing this thing? And the way to solve the, these kind of problems, the way to solve optimization problems, find the find the best way to do something it tends to be taking a derivative you go uh well if i manufactured uh more chairs would i would i make uh, just a little bit more chairs would i make a little bit more money or a little bit less and that that is a derivative that is asking how your profits increase with your uh, chair production so um of course if you want to study things like um anything involving physics or chemistry, then then there's derivatives everywhere. Maybe not necessarily tangents of, I mean, you, you can always draw graphs and interpret them as tangents, but all the laws of physics are formulated in a way that involves derivatives. I mean, not all, but there's derivatives everywhere in physics, there's derivatives everywhere in chemistry, because in chemistry, it uh, doesn't matter if you know that a reaction is going to happen, the reaction that makes the thing you're trying to make, if the reaction takes a thousand years to complete to 50% efficiency, uh, then it's pointless. Um, so then you're, all of a sudden you're studying speed uh, again, and that's a derivative. So there's derivatives everywhere. Derivatives are incredibly useful. Um, all right, I don't know if I answered. <clears throat> uh, I just, I want to make the point that calculus is useful on re, in real life, but it, what is not useful is just knowing derivatives. Just knowing derivatives doesn't, you can't use that anywhere because you can't build cars by knowing derivatives. You've got to know derivatives and how a transmission works. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm going to do another example, last example. Um, this equation just has uh, a really cool graph. Not graph. Oh, um, the solution to this equation look really interesting. Um, so let me show you. This is also out of the book. So this is whew, uh, so that's sine of x plus sine of y equals sine of x y. Uh, this equation contains detail, fine detail that has not been fully resolved. Um, so around the center, it's sort of drawn correctly, but around the around the outside, it's sort of it's confused. Um, I really like this function. This not this function, this equation. Um, yes, all these. How does that even work? Well, you take two points, uh, you plug in sine of x plus sine of y. You see if it equals sine of x y, and if it if it is, you color it blue. Um, there's there's these holes in in here which are. Um, which are great. I love these holes. Um, and I believe that they're not circles. They're round, round the shapes, but they're not circles. Um, 
so hopefully it's pretty clear that this doesn't pass the vertical line test. You draw a vertical line anywhere and it's gonna cross the graph way too many times. Um, pretty sure it's gonna cross it infinitely many times. But still, I can I can take little pieces of this and there's still gonna be graphs of functions. I can still ask what the derivative is. For example, that's the graph of a function. The thing is, there's a lot of them. Uh, and this is solving this equation. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure for sure, but I would bet a lot of money that solving this equation is literally impossible. There's just no expression that solves this uh, for why actually. Uh, just give it a shot for a second. <clears throat> so for why oh it didn't solve it has no idea uh that doesn't prove that there's no way to solve it but i'm pretty sure there's not um okay so the thing is we can still find the derivative of y at any at, if you give me a point in this graph i can find the derivative of y respect to x i can find the tangent line if, if there is one um you know, if the curve is smooth at that point. Um, and it's not even that hard. So if I'm writing this, I mean that y is a function of x. You often, in these kind of problems, you, you don't see this written explicitly, but what they mean, if they write this, they mean that this determines um, really many functions. Um, solving y for x. Because the, the fact that we can't give a formula doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Oh, by the way, the holes, um, I'll tell you at the end of the class after I'm done where the holes come, come from. Because it makes sense where they come from. So uh, let's find the derivative. And well, here solving is not even an option. I have no idea how to solve this, but I can take the derivative on both sides. <clears throat> and well, um, maybe I'll have to do a little bit of work um, on the on the right hand side, but it's nowhere near as hard as the graph suggests. So the derivative of sine of x is cosine, and the derivative of sine of y. So y is a function. So this is saying the derivative of q of x. So I need to. This is going to be the derivative of the outside applied to the inside times the derivative of the inside. But g is y. So this is the derivative with respect to y times um, uh, the derivative of y. And now, um, Oh, this side is more complicated. So what do I need to use? If you don't answer fast, I'm going to ask a harder question. You can't just do cosine xy. No. That only works if the thing inside is um, is x, but it's not x, it's a different function. So whenever you have something inside the function, you need to do the chain rule. So 
here, this is, um, let's do it on this side. Sine of x, y is the same thing as sine of u, if u is x, y. So this means that the derivative of sine of x, y is the derivative of sine of u du, which is the cosine x, y that Matthew suggested, times the derivative of u respect to x. So the first term is uh, cosine because the derivative of sine is cosine. And the second term is the derivative of x, y. So, well, actually the derivative of x, y respect to x is something we just did in the previous uh, problem. So um, we use the product rule. The product rule, uh, so, Uh, says uh, take dx dx times y plus x dy dx. Take the derivative of one times the other, and then the, the derivative of the other times the y times the one, and multiply them. So, and and u, I just said u is x y. Shouldn't leave the letter I invented in there. So this is the derivative, um, well, the x, the x, um, it's one. And dy, dx, again, just like before, just like every time I do this, I don't know what dy, dx is. That's what I'm trying to figure out. <clears throat> so you gotta be really careful with this because if you if you don't remember to the chain rule, you're gonna, everything's gonna be messed up. You're not gonna get answers. Uh, but if you're careful, then it's really just applying some rules, which is um, not what math is about. Math is about coming with ideas. Uh, when we apply, when we just have to apply rules, then we're happy because things turn out easier than expected. So, which, you know, there's different kinds of easy. It would be hard in that we can make mistakes, uh, but uh, still we know what we're supposed to do. So now I need, so now I took the derivative, I need to solve for y. Uh, so that involves uh, taking everything that has a y prime, sorry, solve for y prime. Putting everything with a y prime on one side, putting everything without it on the other, and and dividing. Again, something I might make a mistake here, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have doubts about what I'm supposed to do because it's just always the same. Most problems I give you like limits are not always the same. Um, you look at them and you, there's no reason why you should know what you're supposed to do. So let's appreciate the times where, when there's actually a recipe where we always just do the same thing. Um, and now that we put all the Y primes on one side all the non-y prime from the other side, we just take a common factor of y prime and divide. And, and we got an answer. So now if I know any x and y that lie on the curve, I know, I know the tangent line. And I mean, I got a bit confused with the chain rule, but this wasn't even that hard, I think. Um, it, took, it took just one slide. 
most problems I don't fit in one's life. Um, and I think I gotta appreciate as well that this formula works for any of those, any function you choose in the crazy graph. Uh, is gonna is gonna have a derivative given by this formula. Anywhere in there, this formula is satisfied, which is just great. I don't need to think of, you know, infinitely many possibilities. So, um, well, write that down again. Y prime equals y cos of x y minus cos x. Cos y minus cos x y times x. So, um, for example, so the original equation was uh, the sum of the signs equals to the sign of the product. Uh, so one thing. Does anyone see two numbers that satisfy that equation? It's a complicated equation, but... Um, I can... I can only I can only guess one solution, one pair of numbers that goes in there. Which I can see in the graph right here. What's sign of zero? Zero. So if everything in there is zero, I would get zero plus zero. Uh, the equation would be satisfied. So the point zero zero is, is on that curve. Um, oh. So um, So zero zero is on the curve. Um, the sine of zero plus the sine of zero is zero plus zero, which is indeed equal to the sine of zero times zero. So the tangent, um, so the slope, uh, I can just find it by plugging in uh, x equals zero and y equals zero in that equation. So I get zero minus cosine of zero divided by cosine of zero minus zero. And that is, well, cosine of zero is one, but I don't need to remember that right now because they're gonna cancel on the top and the bottom. But... So this is negative one. <clears throat> and that was indeed what it looked like in the picture. Uh, it looked like the tangent line there had slope negative one. So this is the line going through zero, zero with slope negative one, and it, it is indeed tangent. So without solving an impossible equation, without doing anything other than taking a derivative and solving a linear equation, we found this tangent slope. Um, 
Fine. Well, I'm done for today. Um, you can ask me any questions you may have, or I can answer you the question of 